If you only have 24 hours in Florence, here are the top things you should do. Hi everyone, I am Noreen from Where To Now and today we're exploring Florence in 24 hours. Walking is the best way to see all the main sites in Florence, but if you stay on the outskirts, the bus is reliable and affordable. You can buy your bus ticket from a cartoleria, a shop selling magazines and newspapers. Once entering the bus, remember to validate your ticket to avoid any penalty fees. We are starting our self-guided tour of Florence near Piazza del Duomo. So many cute stands in this area sell high-quality leather goods and art. The sights are also breathtaking. I promised to show you some secret wine windows in Florence. In this video, we'll visit five still-functioning wine windows. The first wine window on our list is Cantina de Pucci. Cantina de Pucci is also a great dining restaurant option if you're hungry. After visiting our first wine window, it is time to stroll around Piazza del Duomo. A great stop to add to your itinerary is the Basilica of Santa Maria de Fiore. The Basilica of Santa Maria del Fiore also has rooftop access, allowing you to take a bird's eye view of Piazza del Duomo. If you want to visit Basilica de Santa Maria del Fiore, I recommend booking your ticket ahead of time as the lines can be long if you arrive without a ticket. This basilica is the fourth largest church in the world. After getting a little closer to God, it is time to find a second wine window. Osteria Veladone serves Florentine steaks, classic Tuscan dishes, and vegetarian dishes, so this is a good restaurant for a vegetarian meal in Florence. But on this occasion, we went for the wine. When you visit one of these windows, if you see the window closed, all you have to do is knock on the window. That is, of course, if it's during regular hours when the restaurant is open. We'll find our third wine window about a three-minute walk from Oesteria Bella Donne. After that, we decided to head on to Piazza della Repubblica and just stroll around for a bit. Nearby, you'll find the Bargello Museum and the Uffizi Gallery. If it's your first time in Florence, I highly recommend you check those out. The Bargello Museum houses famous sculptures that date back to the 1200s. You'll need about an hour or two to explore the museum. The Uffizi Gallery also has an outstanding collection of ancient sculptures and paintings. You'll need about two hours to visit the gallery, but you can easily also spend four hours soaking in all the art. We're heading to lunch at one of my favorite restaurants in Florence. 
La Buqueta Food and Wine also has a wine window, but this one is not in service today. Wine windows date back to the 1600s when the plague hit Florence hard, killing about 12% of the city's population. They used these windows as a safe way to sell food and wine with minimal contact. These wine windows became popular again after COVID-19 as some restaurants reopened them with social distancing in mind. La Buqueta Food and Wine is an old-school traditional restaurant with only an Italian menu. But don't worry, I've gotcha. I'll show you exactly what we order because our dishes were delicious. I got the tagliatelle al cinghiale, a local Tuscan region wild boar pasta. If you eat meat and find yourself in Tuscany, this is a great spot to try wild boar. Wild boar has a very distinct taste and is much richer and flavorful than your regular pork. We also got the gnocchi angeli e demoni, which is a handmade gnocchi cooked with stracciatelle cheese, aromatic herbs, and edible flowers. Add this restaurant to your list, you won't regret it. After half a day of eating and drinking in Florence, it was time to walk off our food coma with a mini hike. We're crossing Ponte Alle Gracie, heading to Giardino de la Rose, and hiking to the top to visit Piazzale Michelangelo. The Rose Garden of Florence is free to visit. You only have to pay one euro if you want to use the toilets. Other than that, it's entirely free. Giardino de la Rose was such a lovely addition to our trip. We got to walk a bit, hike up, stretch our legs, go to the top and get the best views of Florence for free. Being in the city for too long can be way too hectic, but walking through the gardens was just so peaceful and it's a great place to disconnect from the city and relax. You smell all the roses. It was truly a pleasant walk. This location was one of the highlights of our trip to Florence, Italy. After visiting the garden, remember to continue hiking up for breathtaking views overlooking Florence. You'll find some vendors selling Florentine tapestry and down back on the street some artists selling their artwork on Etsy. We're heading to my favorite place for wine tasting in Florence, Le Volpie Le Uva. The wine selection here is excellent. I highly recommend making a wine tasting reservation before visiting if you want to do some wine tasting. San Gimignano, Tuscany. And this is Vermentino di Gallura Sardinia. Chianti Classico, the great is San Giovese. Bolgheri from Tus uh, the Tuscan coast is Cab and Merlot. Mm. And this is once again San Giovese, but of a different zone, and it's a reserve. 
and it's Nobre de Montepulciano. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 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 Beauti
I want to take you to my favorite gelateria in Florence, La Carraya. This place is always packed. The gelato here is that good. They have an extensive selection of flavors and the gelato is authentic Italian gelato. So, so, so good. Another great spot if you're looking for vegan or vegetarian options in Florence, Italy is Il Ristoro. Many food tour companies also stop here, so you can easily make your self-guided foodie tour with this travel guide. Il Ristoro is an intimate spot with a great selection of veggies, cheeses, and meats. I opted for a refreshing April spritz before continuing our walk. An antique photo booth in the middle of the street was a really cool find. This photo booth is like in the middle of the street, like a high traffic street in Florence. I loved it. Remember to lose yourself amidst Florence's most dramatic romantic sights. As a nightcap, we decided to go to Florence's most famous sandwich spot. Now, the lines here are insane, but they do move pretty fast. I wanted to see if the hype was real. Is this sandwich really that good? Let's start with the smell of freshly baked bread. Oh my god, nothing beats that. Okay, maybe the smell of cookies, I don't know. It's pretty up there. Depending on what your sandwich has inside, you'll have a handmade paste that complements the cheeses and the meats on your sandwich. I decided on Tartufo 3, which is a truffle salami, pecorino cheese, and honey sandwich. And oh my god, yes, the hype is real. <laughs> the sandwich is an explosion of wonderful flavors in your mouth. I kept dreaming about this sandwich for weeks. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Till next time.